and got no strings to hold me down. I got no strings on me. I never really uh, was huge into Pinocchio, but I did watch it a little bit as a kid. But uh, it came to me how we're, in a sense, we're playing out, it's a good analogy, we're in many ways our personal, I don't know what you call it, evolution, our, our journey, our spiritual journey, that each of us have to go through in discovering self and who we are, what we are, what we are where we really are. It's much like playing out the story of Pinocchio. Pinocchio was a puppet that wanted to believe he was a real boy. He was striving for something more than what he was. And he felt there was something more. And in the adventure of Pinocchio, He goes, well, he goes to this grand adventure, meets all these characters, striving to be a real boy so he'll be loved, right? Because why does he want to be a real boy? He wants to be a real boy because he wants to be loved. And so all these things happen and he wishes for a fairy and so he calls upon a fairy to make him a real boy and and he goes on an adventure to prove that he can be a real boy, to earn being a real boy. Lying, not lying, if he lies, his nose grows, and all these different things. Pinocchio goes on an adventure in the, uh, 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 adventure in the world of illusions and magic. And, and so he, he struggles on this journey. And he figures if he can do the right thing or say the right thing and grow, then, then he'll be a real boy. And so, in many ways, we're playing that out. But we're not Pinocchio. And we're not Geppetto, the puppet master. We're not even Geppetto. We could maybe think of Geppetto as, as the mind. And we're not even the fairy, nor can a fairy grant us what we want. What we are is what's behind all of that. It's the light, it's the source, it's the essence that we know, it's the awareness, the conscience, consciousness. And so when we return to stillness and we let go of thoughts, and the mind becomes clear. If you've ever sat there and just stared at shadows on a wall or light bouncing off a of water and you had no thoughts, that's how you locate yourself. And so I always encourage people to go to stillness a lot. And it's because when we don't do that, we get caught up in the mind. We get caught up in the mind that creates problems that don't exist. And then it tries to solve these problems. And we figure if we get better at solving the problems, if we figure out the right way we're going to, you're never gonna, we're never gonna figure out the problems because there's no problems. <laughs> but when we return to stillness and locate ourselves, and stillness could be anything, med meditation, walking in nature, doing dishes, working out, creating, whatever clears your mind. So I highly recommend that, but I do want to be clear because a lot of people will always make the assumption and it's really the mind trying to protect the mind. So they'll, it'll, people will jump to conclusions when told to do this or, you know, encouraged to do this. People often will say, well, no, my ego's, I'm, my ego's okay. I just, you know, I'm going to let my ego do what I want and if, if I just let it do what it wants, it'll be okay or if I'll, I'll just let my, you know, all these things will come up. And the ego is not you, you're not the character. And so we know this because we know we're not the bodies, the body changes. I mean, you used to be this, 
this big and then you grew and grew and changed your body has changed you know science shows us it's changed a million times over on a cellular level you are not your body and you are not your character you're not your mind your character your personality has changed and will continue to change so that's not consistent so you can't be that and you're not your mind your mind we change our minds all the time so we can't be the mind so when we start eliminating these things in, in an effort to locate our true selves, we're not our feelings. Feelings always change. This world changes. Everything's changing. Everything always, that's the nature of everything here. So locating ourselves is finding that which doesn't change. And when we return to stillness and we quiet the mind, we've located ourselves. And the key is, again, I want to stress this, it's not about making the mind the enemy. The mind is not the enemy, and you do not want to have a battle with the mind, because you'll lose. The mind loves a fight. So it's not about making the mind the enemy, or about completely rejecting your character. I still live in my character, I just don't believe it. <laughs> but I enjoy my character as it evolves and changes, but it's just a character. Not really Michael P. Burke, it's just a character. So when we return to stillness, and we do that, we make a true commitment to do that. It is the most important thing. I mean, taking care of your body, very important. Finding balance in life, very important. Health, very important. But these shells and our experience, it all is affected by how we feel and by our state. And the more we, we tap into stillness, the healthier and happier we are. It's, it's really the most important thing. And it also is, is really the way to not suffer, to reduce suffering, because suffering is always in the mind or in the body. So when we return to that place of stillness and we make a commitment to do that, we start to, instead of, we start to reflect instead of analyze. And we start to make movements instead of actions. See the difference? The mind creates the problems. It starts to overanalyze. But even in its analyzation, it's, it's a rigged game because it's based on its own perceptions and its own rigid concepts and narrow vision of a complex universe it can't begin to com comprehend. Or it's, a, or it's true state it can't begin to comprehend. So you can analyze it to the cows come home, but, and you can try to figure out your problems, but there are no problems, so you see, again, a rigged game. But when we return to stillness, and we make a commitment to do that often, we come in with more, and back into this matrix, into this funhouse, into this reality, more balanced, more peaceful, more ourselves, and we're able to reflect instead of analyze. We're able to see instead of judge. And then naturally we start to find we make movements without needing to overthink instead of actions that need to be done that were created by the mind. And so whatever you're going through, struggling or if you're struggling at all, that's the mind, that's it. Because the, the true essence doesn't struggle. The true essence doesn't need to do anything. It doesn't need to believe anything. It doesn't need to, it doesn't need to seek anything. It just is. When you're in that moment, whatever it is, think back to the moments where, where you were just still and the mind was quiet. You were peaceful. You didn't require anything, did you? In that very moment, you did not require a thing. You didn't require a belief. You didn't require anything. You were just there and it was peaceful and it was perfect. And everything was perfect even its imperfection. It didn't judge, it didn't... None of those things that we suffer through. And there certainly wasn't suffering. Suffering is of the mind. So return to stillness. Always return to stillness. Make a commitment to return to stillness, stillness whatever it is. It doesn't matter what it is, whatever clears your mind and you enjoy. Make a commitment to that. Everything else will unfold from that naturally. 
Everything will unfold naturally from that. There's nothing to change. You don't need, you naturally will change. You're, you're, as we get closer to stillness, our way of being, we become more simple. We become uh, less needy and seek, seeking of things. And just a natural process happens, really. This is all a natural process, but it just continues on, just allowing and acceptance and gratitude become a natural way. A life of service becomes a natural way. Self-love and fulfillment becomes a natural way. Uh, judgment more and more starts to slip away. All these things naturally happen. You don't have to decide to do these things because you can't decide. That's the mind trying to pretend, believing it's the entity. And it, your mind isn't the entity. Your character is not the entity. It's all a part of it, but it's a reflection. It's a projection. That's why we live in a world of projection and reflection. Everything in this world, in our experience, in our in our emotions, in our even in science shows us everything's pointing back to us. Everything's telling us to go inward. Everything's pointing to the source. So when we tap into the source, then we can just let everything else unfold naturally in our growth and our ascension, ascending of things that no longer serve us and everything else will unfold naturally. So instead of trying to figure out all the pieces of the puzzle and construct your life and shape your life and change your life, there's a simpler way, just go inward. That's it. Just go inward. It's the most important and, and rewarding thing you can do. Tap into yourself and everything else will unfold naturally. It really will. Love and light.